Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Abyss, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the god tier support, the Queen of Harmony, the Dessert Drugger? Wait, can I even leave this in the script? Anyways, I'm going to be talking about Ranmei, and I'm going to be making a guide on her. As you may already be aware, she's having her rerun in the first half of 2.3. And get those credit cards out, if you don't have her, and you also want Firefly, so you're going to need it. As I mentioned earlier, she is the Queen of Harmony. She's one of the best, if not the best, support that we have so far, and she offers insane versatility across almost every single team comp. Now, usually, I break this up into, like, what stage of the game you're at, and what your kind of account looks like, so early game, free to play, end game. The thing is, I can't really do that with Ranmei. It's really hard to break it into like different parts because she's just insane across the board. If you think about it this way, even if you don't like her, she will buff all the characters you do like. <laughs> so they're gonna do more damage. So even then you still wanna pull her. The difference between an account without and an account with Ranmei is actually night and day. It's crazy. She's also even more busted in Simulated Universe. If you happen to get the Ranmei occurrence, because she is Ranmei, you do get to pick all of the options when a Ranmei occurrence happens and get all of the benefits. Oh yeah, and you can also do this. This is what her technique does. So again, in Simulated Universe, you can basically just wipe out one wave of a boss or just any enemy really, and it lets you weakness break of any type, so regardless of what the enemy is weak to, you can just weakness break them. This only counts when the enemy is hit, so if you do an occurrence or an encounter thing where you fight something, it doesn't happen. However, when it comes to outside of Simulated Universe, all her technique really does is basically just allow you to put up her skill without using a skill point. Since we're already talking about her technique, let's go over all of her traces. So I put these two on the same kind of priority level, but we're going to be talking about her ult and her skill first. They're both equally important and the highest priority, as I said. So her ult puts up a field that lasts for two turns. This gives all allies all type res penetration. That means it gives more damage. Yo, ASMR? 50 million likes and I'll do ASMR channel, real. But yeah, to save you guys time and wondering, it's just more damage. And to put it simply, the last part of our ult, anytime an enemy gets weakness broken and they try to recover, they get rebroken again. However, once they're rebroken, you can't apply that same thing again. It does have an energy cost of 130, which I'd say is kind of mid-ground for your supports, but it's high enough to the point where I'd say you'd want some sort of energy regeneration form. Whether that's in the shape of a light cone or energy regen rope is up to you. I'll get into that later. Next up is her skill. This gives her overtone, which lasts three turns decreasing on her turn. Just like her ult, I didn't really mention that earlier, but yeah. Overtone allows all allies to do 32% more damage when you've got the trace at level 10, and it increases the weakness break efficiency of all attacks by 50%. This means that you do more toughness bar damage so you can shave off more of it at a time. This is why she's a key factor in a super break team, especially with Harmony MC, as you can do more super break damage with her. And last up is her talent. This is the third priority. It gives all allies 10% speed, and when allies break an enemy, Ranmei does damage that enemy too. She deals break damage equal to 120% of her ice break damage. Don't level up the damn basic attack, please, unless you want to farm more trace materials. That shit sucks. Think about all the trailblaze power that you're missing out on. You could get an like, insane god piece relic. Yeah, you know you're not going to get that. Just don't waste it. Yeah, you don't really need it leveled up. Anyways, let's talk about the uh, big node thing. So her A2 uh, trace thing gives 20% break effect for all your allies. And then the A4 regens 5 energy at the start of her turn. With her A6, for every 10% of her break effect exceeding 120%, her skill will increase ally damage by an extra 6%, the upper limit of this being 36%, meaning if you want to get the most out of this, you need to build her with at least 180 break effect. And we'll get into the stat checkpoints and everything like that later on. As for how to play her, I mean, it's really simple. Just make sure her skill's always up. It decreases on her turn again. So make sure you're not wasting your skill points and you're keeping a good track of that and you'll be fine. Now onto everyone's favorite part of, you know, all the like guides and stuff. It's the relics. Essentially, there's two builds you can choose from. So it's up to you. You can go the fast way or you can go the slow run me way. R run me wait. That sounds so weird. I personally think slow is better. But I guess you can run fast if you want. Okay, so slow is comfy. It can be easier to keep up time on your ult and skill for like MOC and stuff like that if you're planning to clear it really fast. I mean, everyone plans to clear it fast, but like if you have, you know, the DPS and stuff like that, that you can clear it fast. But I can understand the appeal of a fast run me. Uh, she'll generate skill points a little bit faster. When I say faster, I don't mean she'll generate more skill points. It's just that having her turn faster, she can give a skill point in certain situations. I.e. you have one skill point left and you've got two of your DPS coming up. But if Ronmei somehow in the middle of those two, in a faster build, then, you know, you can generate a skill point in between, and they can both use their skills. I mean, there is few, like, situations where this works, I guess, but it's still worth noting. It also doesn't need to be DPS in particular, that's just what came to my mind first. Anyways, if you're running a slower Ronmei, 
you can go for four piece watchmaker this is actually the one i recommend most either way so if you can get a high speed one that's fine as well try and opt for four piece watchmaker this is the one again i recommend the most just because the four piece effect gives all allies 30 percent break effect for two turns when she uses her ultimate so especially in those break team comps which is where you're probably going to be using her more now so in your boot hill comp or your like firefly team comp or even with harmony mc as well she'll buff their break effect and allow them to provide more to the team you can also opt for two piece two piece for any break effect sets if you're struggling to get that break effect up so that's two piece thief with two piece watchmaker or two piece of the new set i don't actually know what it's called Okay, I looked that up. It's called Iron Cavalry against the Scourge. Again, with these long ass names, man. Can we just keep it simple? Like, you know, just Iron Cavalry. There you go, done. Break effect buffing set number three. Okay, obviously not that, but you get my point. If you want to ignore me and just go for the faster on me and ignore me, again, I'm going to say that you're ignoring me. You can go for two-piece hacker space and two-piece of any other break effect sets that I just mentioned. And you can also run four-piece hacker space if you are brain dead, because I think that's way overkill, but you know, do what you want. I'm kidding, you can do whatever you want. It is still brain dead though. Planner ornament time. If you're running a slow run me, Von Weck is definitely the best set to go for. She can go first regardless of whatever, even if she has a low speed, so 120. As long as it's above that, that's enough. There are some other options for you. So you can go for the broken kill set. That's a very typical support set to go for. Gives a 10% effect res. And if she has above 30% effect res, crit damage increases for the whole team by 10. You can also opt for the Talia set. I don't really recommend it, but you can use it, especially if you're running a faster run me, because you will need 145 speed to get the set effect. And yes, you will actually need 145. Ron May's plus 10 speed doesn't affect herself. You can also go for some other stuff like Fleet of the Ageless for that extra HP and stuff. Or you could go for the Penicony set if you have some pieces lying around and you don't really want to farm, you know, World 4 for Sprightly Vonwek. Honestly though, my brain's so wide to saying World 4 isn't great to farm, but now break meta is like a thing. You can just go ahead and farm it now. Talia works on like a bunch of other characters, you know, like your boot hill. I guess Firefly, um, Harmony MC as well, and any other break units you want to try and run. And then any Vonwex pieces that you get can go on your other supports or your run me. Let's see if I can do this without messing up like I did in the Fushuan's one. All right, so for the body, you want HP or defense. For your boots, you want HP, defense, or speed. Depends what kind of run me you want to run. For the orb, again, HP or defense. And lastly, for your rope, you'll go with either break effect or energy regeneration. You can only really go for the energy regen one if you have above 180 already. I do think that is more of a priority than your energy regen, but you know, don't feel pressured to not test things. Don't take my word for it. You're free to test it if you have a spare one, and then you can come back and see that I was right and then pick what I said. All right, now for your stat checkpoints. So you want to aim for around 3.5k HP, 1k plus defense, 120 speed if you're going for this Von route, 134 speed just for, you know, typical two turns in the first cycle, blah, blah, blah. Or you can go for a faster run me at 160 plus. For your break effect, you will want 180 or more break effect. That's the best, so you can get the full usage out of her kit. And of course, the higher you can get, the better. Lastly, for your energy regen, you could go for energy regen rope and get that 19.44. But if you have a light gun that gives you energy, whether it's Memories of the Past, Meshing Cogs, or, you know, her signature, you could probably opt for a break effect rope in that case as well. Since we're talking about light guns, let's go on to that. So obviously, signature light gun, best in slot. I don't really know why I mention this in every guide, but I do anyway. I mean, you know, if you're going all out, you're going to get the light gun, right? But this light gun's actually like cracked. Probably the best signature for any character so far. So what does it do? It gives 60 break effect. When the wearer uses her ultimate, it increases all allies' damage for 24% for three turns. And then if she has above 150 break effect, which she will if you have a good build, you get a skill point too. And at the start of every wave, she regens 10 energy for all allies as well. I actually don't know what they were thinking making this. It feels like two light cones in ones because there's like four different effects that it gives. But as good as it is, don't feel too pressured to go for it. You don't need it that badly. You are tweaking if you go for any of the five star options other than this one. But for four stars, you can go for Memories of the Past, second best light cone at S5, probably even at S1, but I haven't done the calcs. Memories of the Past does offer break effect buff and it regens a little bit of energy whenever you do a hit, but this doesn't happen when you get hit, unlike Mesh and Cogs. I also haven't had too much issue using it at S3, but I think S4 is just a little bit better, obviously, but it's just in terms of like getting your ult, it's a bit more comfortable. And then S5 is obviously way better. I'll quickly show you what I mean just by the S3 and S4. So it's like one energy difference. And honestly, it's a real kick in the nuts to have 129 out of 130 energy, but it's not like that big of an issue, really. It's just kind of a like minor inconvenience thing. Either way, if you're struggling with getting that break checkpoint of 180 it's a nice one to have just to boost it if you have enough break and you do want that energy and you don't have an s5 memories of the past you could go for meshing cogs and you know if you're feeling like it i guess you could rock a dance 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 but i think it's pretty mid for run me next up let's go over some team comps uh well at least that's what i usually do 
but I mean, for Ron May, I guess everyone? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Break units, I guess she's the best with. Uh, she's good in dark comps too, and any duo DPS. And also Blade, Blade can make good use of her since she buffs damage instead of attack, unlike a lot of other supports. Just for a simpler understanding of it, basically one slot will be Ron May's, and then a typical team comp would have a DPS another sort of support and then the last spot you know just throw in a tank or your healer like i sound so biased but i'm not uh, maybe i am actually i don't know but she's like insanely good you can pretty much just designate one slot to her and then change whoever you want and it usually works fine if i'm gonna be like objective about it i gotta find some like downsides to her so i guess the action delay could be considered a downside especially in dot team comps uh you could get like a one cycle extra in terms of clears just because enemies don't have a turn to like get affected by the dot but i mean wow that sounds very nitpicky one turn or like one cycle but hey it could be the difference between clearing with 19 cycles left and clearing with 20 so you know you got to take that into consideration somewhat and for the last like kind of main topic let's go over the eidolons e1 is when her ult is up everyone's damage ignores 20 percent of enemy defense that's pretty damn busted her e2 increases the attack of all allies when attacking weakness broken enemies it's kind of meh not really worth like forking out money over. I guess it kind of works a bit better in like super break team comps, but again, not worth getting E2. For her E4, whenever any enemy, dude, try saying that really fast. Any enemy weakness. Okay, whenever any enemy weakness is broken, her break effect increases by 100 for three turns. So this is basically always up. Dude, I actually can't make one of these guides without like stuttering a shit ton. This is fucking embarrassing. Anyway, her E6 lastly basically turns her into a DPS. It extends the duration of her ult by a turn. And then the talent break damage multiplier increases by 200%. So that boosts it to 320. She becomes a DPS and you will do a crazy break with any, you know, unit that attacks. And lastly, the age old debate, E1 versus S1. I would say S1 is probably the best option, but she's fine at E0 or S0. As in like with an S4 plus memories of the past or whatever you're using. She's usually fine with that. I've never had any issues with her and I, you know, I clear everything anyway yeah i'm built different i'm built like that i'm crazy good at this game right and i will say you're gonna have to you know fork out the money for it because this patch is stacked we've got firefly who looks cool we've got jade who looks pretty hot then you've also got the lycons on top of that so yeah you're gonna have to pick wisely i'll leave it to your judgment buddy anyways let's just close off with some last thoughts i think overall she's a cracked unit that's kept up perfectly fine to this day and she will continue keeping up really well because if she doesn't then every other harmony unit that we have right now probably will suck and if you have a robin already and you're like oh should i go for her shouldn't i should i save uh you should probably go for her just because imagine having robin on one side ron on the other i don't have to imagine that because i'm smart but it's so fucking good to use. Trust me, it's worth it. Anyways, that does it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you think. And if you're going for Ron May, let me know if you are picking her up or already have her. I'm just curious because I need to justify this to other people so I can see what people are saying. You know what I mean? And this is a rare instance where I'm genuinely wishing you guys good luck with your pulls. And I'm not being salty about it because... Damn, it is rough if you don't have Ronmei. Like, you gotta get Firefly, Ronmei, and one of their light cones, maybe. Actually, I don't think you need one of their light cones. I think you'll be fine with having S0 on both of them. And lastly, as much as I do poke fun at you guys, feel free to ask me any questions, whether it's in the comments or join my Discord and ask me there. You can tag me or whatever you like. There is a channel called Star Rail Help. If you ever need any help, someone in my Discord or me, usually me, um, will offer some advice if you need it. Either way, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.